Hello, and welcome to this uh, video on uh, LaTeX. So this is going to be an intro to using LaTeX, and I'm going to do it in Overleaf, which I think is the simplest way of getting going with uh, LaTeX. And what I'll show you today is pretty portable to any uh, LaTeX typesetting app. And I have used other apps aside from LaTeX, non-online ones, but I, uh, I've actually started using this myself quite a bit, so I'll stick with it. So what I'm showing you here is uh, after having made an account and logged in, I, uh, I've just clicked on a blank project. And so this is what a blank project looks like. And it'll, it'll open up with your, um, your uh, folder here, the folder for the project. And right now I only have the main uh, the main file in there, and I'm going to close this down. You can either slide this to, you know, save a little bit of screen space, or you can click on the arrow to get rid of it altogether. I'm going to open up the text document, which is on the left here, and what you see on the right is the PDF. So um, up here, all, all LaTeX documents stop, start with this document class, uh, and uh, by default, it's an article, but there's other formats. So I'll stick with this for now and won't say anything more about it. And so there's gonna always be a bunch of use package commands up here. One that I often use is geometry. So use package geometry. And this allows you if you put, so square brackets are an optional argument, you can leave that out and you can just call the geometry package and that tells Overleaf that you wanna use this particular package that has a whole bunch of features. And the nice thing about it is you can reset the margins so you can set the left margin to be, let's say, two centimeters, and the right margin also to be two centimeters. And I can modify those after once I have a little bit of text in there to see. So um, um, by default, it puts my, I think this is my username, so I'm gonna replace that with my name. That's gonna come out as the author. So what we're doing here before the begin document command, really the document all lives between these two commands, begin and end, um, and those are, just good examples of what you call an environment. So this is the document environment that extends all the way from the begin to the end document. And above that are uh, package declarations and some parameters that are set that will be used, let's say in this case, by make title. So when I go up to recompile, or what I prefer to call typeset, you'll see the document will update. And you see the introduction moved out here. That's because the margins are now two centimeters on each side. And I've got my name there and I've got the date. A nice trick if you want to know when you last worked on this is you can use the command today. And when you recompile, instead of hitting this button all the time, when you're in the text document uh, on a Mac, it's command return. I'm not too sure what it would be on Windows or Linux, but I suspect control return maybe. It'll do that for you without having to move your mouse around. Okay, so, um, and this make title here is what's pulling out these parameters here and laying them out in a way that you can define if you're willing to mess around with the make title uh, um, details. But I'll leave it as is because I'm not going to worry about too much formatting. The nice thing about LaTeX is you formalize the formatting with commands that say this is a section you don't have to worry about formatting it like you do in word where oh i want this bigger or smaller you have a uniform styling across the document you can create your own style files if you want to change it um, and i generally i don't like to put numbers in front of sections unless i'm you know doing chapters in a book or something so i'm going to put a star after section which is a slightly different section command and you can see that number disappears Okay, so I want to just do an example uh, of how to set up, let's say, a homework assignment submission. So maybe you would change this to assignment one. And maybe you, you want to put the date here, maybe you want to replace that by the due date and just write it out in, in uh, text or just leave it as today and then make sure it's typeset at the right time. Uh, so let's see some of the things that you might want to do. So you might want to enumerate a list. So I'm going to create a begin and I'll type, start typing enumerate and it's identified the things that I might be interested in doing. So I'm going to choose that first one and it's automatically given me the formatting for an enumerated list. And what that means is I can put the first item here 
and then another slash item second item. And now if I typeset that, again with that command return, you can see there's my itemized list. So, and you can do, you can copy this over and place this within. And I always like to indent so that it's clear. Uh, oh, that's, no, that doesn't work there. Okay, I'll tab it in. So it's clear where each of the items belong. And so now, first sub item, and you'll see this is going to get presented as 1A, B, and then 2, and so on. And you can nest uh, at least one more, and it'll give you uh, lowercase Roman numerals. You can also mess around and change this. For example, if I want to call this something else, uh, let's say, um, let's say, I don't know, fundamental theorem of calculus. That's what the question is all about. So I'm going to give it that label. And so that'll change the A to whatever I put in those optional brackets. I don't use that very often, but it's nice to know it's there. All right, so um, maybe you have code that you want to include in your LaTeX document. So you might want to include, uh, so the traditional way to do this, and there's other ways to do it, is I, I would use a verbatim environment. And so a verbatim environment, it typesets it in a fixed font uh, display. And, um, and uh, a, a fixed width this, uh, font, and it looks kind of like a typewriter. So you can put your MATLAB code, let's say, in here. So for i, uh, oops, for i equal one to ten, uh, oops. Uh, let's say we want to define f of i is equal to i point y squared. I guess I don't need that point wise, but let's have it and then end. So we can now typeset that and see how it comes out. So you can see there it's got a different font. It's um, it's indented slightly. And the other thing is you can put all sorts of things in here. Like if you want to show somebody how to do something in LaTeX, you can actually put in LaTeX commands. And for example, let's say I can put in the slash today. And when I typeset that, it actually appears as slash today. So it takes it as literal things, literal, little, literal characters. It sort of prevents LaTeX from interpreting, um, interpreting the commands that you'd be including there. OK, so let's say under item uh, sub-item A here, I want to include uh, uh, an image or something. So to do that, we have to add a package, so slash use package. And I'm going to use the graphics package. Now, these are two different graphics packages. The graphics with an X has more features, and I like using that one. So I'll add that one. And I'm going to keep the use packages in separate, stand them off a little bit so they're easier to find quickly. And then here, I'm going to put in uh, slash include, and it's going to autocomplete for me, include graphics. And in this spot here, we can put a file. So in order to include a file, I can type the name of the file here, but Overleaf won't know anything about it. So what I have to do first is open up this little panel here, and I want to upload. And now I'm going to go select from my computer, and I will grab something I just placed here conveniently. So this is a figure from an old paper from a few years ago. And I'll insert that. Now that's sitting here in our file list. And uh, I can go back to my tech file and close this, because I now have that file there. And I can start typing right here. Free, And it automatically identifies the file that I have. It's the only one in my folder. If I had lots that started with free, I'd have to choose. But that's the only one I need to choose from right there. And so now let's see what it does with this. And so it's made it, I would say, pretty large. So let's shrink that down. In the option here, I can shrink that down with a width command equal. And here you can either go 0.5 times, let's say, text width. I think it's text width. I'll try this out and see if that works. But, or you can just specify the, uh, the length. 
tersebut ke semua anak. Uh, where did it go? Maybe it didn't work. Let's, all right, so I'd have to look that up to get that right. So let's just do it by, uh, let's say, <clears throat> eight centimeters. And here I'm dealing with a standard 8.5 by 11 inch page. I don't know why I say it is 8.5 by 11, but then I always do it in centimeters. Uh, so there we can control the width of it. And I can make it tiny if I want. And so that is how you embed an image and how you embed code or what looks like code into a LaTeX document. So I'll wrap that up here and maybe I will continue if there are more uh, common issues that come up with, uh, you know, how do you do such and such in LaTeX, I'll create more of these videos.